Good afternoon. Jonathan Marvel, Marvel Architects here in New York. We're in architecture and urban design practice, and um, I'm delighted to be here to talk a little bit about how we can solve what we are all aware of the world's impending problems. We're going to have 9 million people, 9 billion people already on this planet, and that's going to grow to uh, is it, uh, 7 billion now. We're going to grow to 9 billion by 2050. So in, in less than 40 years, we're going to increase our population by 20%. So how do we do that? Um, we're going to have to do that by getting our cities to be denser, to be more efficient. Um, these are transportation hubs. They're fabulous places to live. But to avoid the urban sprawl, we're going to have to go vertical. And we're going to have to get used to living in a more vertical environment. So how do we mitigate verticality? And the designers in the room are going to understand when I talk about scale. Scale is the relieving factor that humanizes spaces, humanizes our cities so that we feel comfortable. We feel that equilibrium. I'll talk a little bit about that first by talking about some gardens in Kyoto, Japan, and how the DNA of those gardens translates into the vertical towers in Tokyo, and then bring that to New York. I'll begin with a, um, a little anecdote about Isamu Noguchi, Japanese-American sculptor, who really understood public domain better than anybody else. And so by studying Isamu's work, I felt we could really understand how to make our public spaces special, magical, and through art, bring us to that kind of equilibrium, that state of, of delight. And Isamu went to Japan um, and he was amazed by the most humble uh, of, of structures, whether they're in, in the gardens of Kyoto, uh, but also sprawling around the cities in these very modest parks, these armatures supporting the, the sakura, the cherry blossoms. And, and one can see this sort of relationship between technology and nature. And, and it was really through his, his, his studies of nature and the, and, the, and the gardens in Kyoto that really helped him understand how the, the behavior of stone, and which he spent the last 25 years of his life uh, no longer working in the public domain per se, but really studying the spirit within stones. And he, he characterized the Japanese garden in, in two distinct uh, areas, the, the, the trees and the stones. And the trees were like the muscles. They grow over time. They get stronger. The stones, however, have this eternal quality. They never change. They, they look new from the very beginning, and they, and they maintain that freshness. And so you can see in this, in the, the rock garden of, of um, Ginkakuji, the, um, the relationship of the abstracted landscape man-made against the, the borrowed landscape of, of, the, of the hill beyond. And, and that kind of, that notion of the borrowed landscape culminates in, in Rio Anji, where that absolute amazing artifice of, of that horizontal plane occupied by seven stones, each stone you know, alone beautiful, but in tandem with the other stones starts to bring back the sense of dialogue and, and, and a metaphor. Are these, are these stones in a garden? Are they islands in the inland sea, which is nearby? Or are these planets in orbiting around the, sol the sun? Or are they galaxies in, in tandem with each other? So there's a scale element here that can start to expand our understanding and the, and, and the poetry of our, of our sense of place. When you take and translate that into the urbanism that underlies the DNA of Tokyo, um, you start to see it on, the, on the right the, the high density urban living quarters, families living generation and generation on top of each other in these small footprints, uh, coupled with this large open boulevard with the streetcar and a bridge possibly connecting to a park, but that the tandemness of having the high density and the relief of the open space is, is really the DNA that gets conveyed from the gardens of Kyoto. Uh, Tokyo devastated three or four times throughout the 20th century, fires, earthquakes, world war, had to reinvent itself uh, post-war. Tokyo borrowed from the, the architecture found within North American cities, the verti sense of verticality. So that all of a sudden, we're introducing a new scale to the Japanese uh, environment, the Japanese aesthetic. And, and the DNA of those small footprint 
houses in Tokyo is now extruded into these towers. So all of a sudden, we're challenged by that. What was a horizontal plane is now characterized by this vertical element. Um, and, and now, today, the, we're, we're, we've gone beyond that to, to, um, to really see Tokyo as being the, the, the birthplace for this high-density, mixed-use typology that, that we're now seeing popping up all over the world. And, and these two towers I'd like to talk about today uh, on the top of the slide is uh, Tokyo Midtown by SOM, designed by SOM, and on the, in the middle of the slide, KPF's Ropungi Hills. And both of these are teaming with, both these teams teamed up with landscape architects from Japan. So the, 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 I believe that the DNA of, of, the, of the Japanese aesthetic is, is built into these uh, programs of early mixed-use buildings. And this section through Ropungi Hills will just demonstrate the kind of the, the public events that happen at, at multiple floors. So the lower levels, uh, ed, entertainment, recreation, the upper levels, museums, event spaces, restaurants with, a, with an observation deck up at the top. When you compare the two towers architecturally, uh, on, the, on the, the left of the screen, Tokyo Midtown, uh, SOM using this layering device to, to create a sense of scale in the tower. The um, Ropungi Hill is much more of an object building. We, we scale up and, 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 and balance out the density um, with open space. As you move up, you can see restaurants next to open walkways. In, in Tokyo, they're not afraid of sky bridges uh, crossing from one place to the other. Um, and as continuing moving up in the building, looking out onto the gardens that surround the building through windows very much like the one I'm standing in front of, uh, where you frame the views of the garden and thus bring that barred landscape deeper into the, into the building. Um, at the very top floor where there's a wonderful three-story tall restaurant, it's wrapped around by this rock garden abstracted roofscape. Um, and, and on the far right of the screen, you'll see Ropungi Hills in dialogue with this other mega city uh, within a city. So now I'd like to just go into quickly Ropungi Hills. We've got the, the ascension of public spaces and these forms of terraced gardens. Uh, you can also get to the upper fifth floor public space via sort of an exciting entertainment-led uh, escalator. The hustle and bustle up at the fifth floor, which is both an interior and exterior condition, is is really coupled by a, 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 a series of gardens so that your comfort zone is really brought uh, into, into a, a kind of humane, human scale. At the very top of the building um, is an artificial uh, heliport. Nothing will ever grow up there, but, but they've put in these beautiful little amphitheaters where you can look out as much as you were looking out onto the gardens in Kyoto over this street, cityscape. It, the explosive verticality that we've got here in New York, which is spreading throughout from Financial District to Midtown to Hudson Yards to the edges of the city. In 20, 2006, we undertook a, city, a, a visionary uh, study for what the city would look like with greenery and infrastructure, creating green streets and rooftop gardens, uh, photovoltaic panels on the facades. Uh, we feel that seven years later, we are introducing that uh, with a building on the Brooklyn waterfront uh, for a, a development of condominiums and hotels with the same kind of park terraces crawling up, rooftop ter and parks and restaurants that you can occupy in a public format and um, crossing and connecting the city through pass-throughs undercutting the buildings. And um, that's what we're doing today. Thank you very much.